Hey everyone, my name is Michael. I'm the customer success lead at Xano. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna go over an external API uh, request uh, example. And this one's gonna be from uh, weatherapi.com, as you can see right here. Um, it's just a, a weather API service that has things like uh, current weather, forecast. Um, there's also geolocation, it looks like. So they have a freemium plan, which is why I'm using it. So you can get started for free. Um, of course, depending on what you want to do, uh, you might have to pay for some of the features. Um, however, it's just a, a great API to show an example of doing an external API request. So once you go ahead and sign up, um, you'll have a dashboard like this. You'll get an API key. Um, I'll make sure to regenerate and delete this one uh, because you're never really supposed to share your API keys because then someone else can do uh, the same call to your API. Um, sometimes you have to pay for them, example, but um, I'm going to go ahead and um, copy this. Make sure that says copied there. And they have this really great interactive API explorer here on the left side. Um, and it just lets you actually kind of build this out piece by piece and run an example one. And then we can use that to just input to Xano. Um, they have their full weather API documentation um, linked up there. So depending maybe on what call you want to do or if you want to learn a little more about it, um, definitely recommend that. Always super important to uh, read and understand the API documentation of whatever, whatever service you are using. Um, because no two API calls are really made the same. Sometimes there's some similarities, but you'll have to understand the specifics around whatever API you're working with, what the parameters are, how to do authentication, um, and what you're actually bringing in. So anyways, let's go ahead. Um, I copied that API key because I knew I was going to have to put it in here. I'll just paste that in. Uh, protocol, I'll do HTTPS. Format JSON, that's perfect. Um, you can see there is uh, two parameters for just current weather here. Looks like Q takes in um, maybe a city, also zip codes, um, longitude and longitude, et cetera. Um, you can visit the, looks like it's linked up, the request parameter section to learn more information, uh, which is really great. Um, we're gonna do current weather. It looks like there's a few different calls here. Um, another parameter looks like air quality index. You can choose yes or no. Um, and you, look, you can just hit show response. So when I do that, um, we'll see the actual call here and we'll see the uh, response code, and here is the response body. So um, the great thing is uh, we can actually um, take a look at this call here, and you can see that the parameters come in. Um, there's key, and this is all encoded, right? URL, Q, and then AQI, no. So I'm gonna go ahead, I could grab this whole thing if I wanted to, and um, put this into a Xano API, um, external API request function, and could make this call just like that if I just put that in the URL. Um, however, I wanna make this uh, dynamic. I don't wanna, I want these uh, keys here, specifically this Q parameter, um, to be dynamic so I can change it so I can pull whatever city I want. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab the URL all the way up to this question mark here, um, and I'm just gonna copy it because that's where the parameters start, right? So if I jump back to Xano here, um, I'm gonna build this in a custom function uh, and then we can uh, reuse it throughout our workspace. That's a really great thing about custom functions. So um, when I go to add function here, I'll say just weather API and I'll go ahead and hit save. And you'll see functions have the same no code API builder as uh, an API, the input function stacks and response. So let's go ahead and build this out. I'm gonna go into my function stack and do an external API request. And just right here in the URL, I'm actually just gonna paste that in and just hit check. And the method is a get. And now remember, we have those three different parameters. We have my API key. Uh, we have Q, which tells us um, either city, uh, latitude, longitude, a certain postal code in certain countries. Um, and then we have AQI, uh, which is the air quality index. So as you saw um, back here, those parameters are all on the URL. However, the great thing about Xano is we can actually um, put that in these parameters section and they'll get built into that URL. So I'm gonna go ahead um, and use this set filter here to set each one of uh, those parameters. So the path uh, would be the key, um, key name or the actual parameter name, and this one happens to be called key, so the value make sure just to go back and grab my API key here and I'll just copy that and come back to Xano. 
And I can hard code this in. I also really like to um, store uh, API keys in these things called environment variables where I'm going to go ahead and save this so I can show you. Um, if you go to your settings um, and you see system variables here and you go manage, I can add a new variable here. I can say something like uh, weather API key and I could just paste that value in um, and go ahead and save that. And that way it's available um, anywhere in my workspace. So now if I go back into my external API call here, and instead of having this value showing, I could actually just choose my environment variable right there that says weather API key. Um, it's really nice to do for uh, things like secrets and API keys because you can sort of hide them there. Um, but let's actually continue here. So I'm gonna do set again, and that next parameter was Q. And the value, I'm going to actually leave that blank for now. I'll show you how to make that dynamic with an input. Um, and then we also had AQI and AQI, um, we can make that dynamic, yes or no. Um, and you can just follow the example of how I'm gonna do it with Q, but I don't really care about the air quality index, so I'm just gonna hard code that in no, uh, for example. Um, so now Q, how do we make that uh, value of that key actually dynamic? Well, what I can do here is I can add an input and let's call this something like city. And now if I come back into this uh, API request and I now click on this path in the value here, I can actually map up to that city input and hit save. So now what's really great is I can go ahead and put in a city. Let's say I wanna do something like uh, New York. And when I go ahead and run this, uh, we'll see that we get our um, API URL. And look, the parameters are built in, just like in the interactive um, API call from Weather API's website. You see the parameters, key, uh, Q, and no are all built in with their values. And if we come back to Xano, um, we have key, Q, and no, all built in there. And we get our 200 response, then we come down and we see our results. We have our uh, location, our, all, all our information um, that we want about uh, New York weather-wise. So uh, one other thing, you might have seen this before, but um, you do these external API recalls and you get, um, looks like this request, uh, the response, and then in there is the results. So how do we can shape this down to get exactly what we want? What I'm gonna do is hit this copy result as JSON, and I'm gonna go ahead into data manipulation and create a new variable here. And we'll just call this something like results. And the value, I can hit this drop down. And where that variable is that's returning my API call, see this one's API underscore one. I can go ahead right next to it and hit subpath, and then just paste that in and select define. And this allows me to visually uh, traverse through that response. So I can just pick and choose exactly what I want. So when I do that, I can go ahead and see, okay, look, results is where I want it, it has location information. It has the current, which is the actual weather. Go ahead and select result. And it'll automatically put that um, dot notation in there to parse through that response. So if I save that, and I just change my response to results here and hit save. And if I go ahead and actually run this now, let's go ahead and uh, change the city. Let's say uh, Miami. And I go ahead and run this. Now you can see we get all the results for Miami. We have the current temperature. Um, all the all the weather data right there. Um, so now that we've built this into a function where it takes in a city input, I want to show you how you could actually use this if you wanted to say pull a city from your database and find the weather uh, that way. So I'm going to jump to the API and I'm going to just go ahead. I'll do a new API group. I'll just call this demo and let's add a new API call. I'll start from scratch and let's just call this uh, weather of city, and I'll go ahead and save this. Uh, so in my database, I actually have um, a table called location, and in there is just a city. It's it's pretty simple. So let me go ahead and save this, and I'm gonna add a, a table reference to that location table, and then we'll just look up uh, a record like that. So I can go ahead, if I run debug, let's go ahead, we'll see, um, Location one, city is Los Angeles. We'll go ahead, uh, do two. I think I just have three cities in here. Barcelona, great. So we have city data nested in uh, this location 
uh, underscore one variable. So now what we can do is I can go ahead and add a custom function because that API call is built in there. There's my weather API. And you'll notice when I link this up, um, we have that city input. So what I can do is actually grab that city from this location record by hitting this dropdown, selecting the location uh, underscore one variable that holds that information. And then I can use dot notation on there to get that city field. And it's very important that that is spelled exactly the same way. You wouldn't want to do a capital city. It's got to be um, city all lowercase so that Xano knows exactly what field uh, from that response to go to. So I'll go ahead and hit save. And let me just rename this. Um, we'll just say uh, weather here as the variable. And let's just go ahead and return uh, just the weather. So if I go ahead and run this, let's run this to as Barcelona. So if we go ahead and run that, you can see we got Barcelona came back as the location. You can see current weather in Celsius and temperature in Fahrenheit as well. Looks like it's partly cloudy today. Let's go ahead and run that for uh, location three, which looks like it is Paris, a little bit chillier in uh, Paris. And then finally, we'll do number one, which was Los Angeles. So right away, you can see how um, we're able to make that call uh, completely dynamic. Um, we're able to map it to something that we already have stored in our database. Um, also, similarly, we could actually have an input here where just like in the function, I would have something like uh, city and maybe we'd actually map this up um, to that input there. And I don't even need this, but let's go ahead and say something like uh, Chicago here and we're getting Chicago. So there you have it. Um, just a, a, obviously a quick tutorial, um, and that's weatherapi.com that I used. Um, they have that great interactive explorer, also really good API documentation. Um, we'll be coming out with more examples of external API requests because uh, the beauty of Xano is you can work with any uh, API. There doesn't have to be something pre-built for that. So if there's something you want to integrate, um, you can do it as long as they have an API. Uh, once again, very important to read those API documentations. And um, if you need some help, just um, you know, either come to office hours, ping us in support, and we'll be sure um, to try and point you in the right direction, um, as long as you are um, reading those API documentations and um, you know, actually uh, have some of that you're stuck. So if you like this video, um, please subscribe to our channel, give it a like, and I'll see you guys in the next one.